All right, I'm good. You good? Yeah. All right. You guys good? Good. Good, good go. Good afternoon. Um, we're very happy to be here today. I think for quite some time, for over a year, the people of Nassau County have been calling on their county legislature and their county executive for reform in the contract process. A little over a year ago, this county rocked with an ad tech uh, scandal, a contract that was giving out that led to the conviction of Senator Skelos and his son, led to the they pointed out the problems and the flaws in our contracting process. And since that time, we have advocated for change in Nassau County and change in regards to the contract form reform. Unfortunately, for the last year, the, the Republicans and the majority of the county executive have ignored our position, have ignored our will. But today, the people have spoken. Today, we are submitting 4,357 signatures from Nassau County residents that proves that they want change in the form of an independent inspector general, a body and a position that will add transparency to a process that, glare, that clearly needs it. In this petition that we will see, um, it was required by the, by the county charter that we submitted in the time frame that we did. And being that we have one legislative meeting, it is our anticipation and requirement by the charter that the presiding officer call this particular item for a vote based off of the amount of petitions that we have today. The presiding officer has been very good to ignore the Democrats and the legislative minority, but she cannot ignore the 4,357 and the countless others that have demanded change in regards to the contract reform here in this county. For two years, in 2015 and 2016, as I said before, the presiding officer has ignored our position. We have put in multiple bills that requested uh, the county contract reform in this county, and still to this date, we have not seen any reform. And let's be clear, if the county, if the county executive and the majority leader, the presiding officer, would have just voted for the local laws that were presented to them, held at least one hearing after a major scandal in this county has rocked uh, our residents and rocked our elected officials, we would not be here today. But that being said, we have to prove that thousands upon thousands of people want to change in this county. And I truly believe that this petition demonstrates that. And I'm glad to have Ms. Andy Bader, who's here with us today, who is filing uh, our petitions as a resident of Plainview and also uh, a ward commissioner. And on top of it, um, Eileen Palatano is actually our agent of the proper terms for Lauren? Yes, I'm sorry. It's she's our agent, agent of, of, of signatories. Agent of signatories. Uh, and in all full disclosure, Mrs. Napolitano was also a candidate uh, in the 13th legislative district as well, but she is currently a citizen uh, in East Meadow, and she is our agent of signatories for the petitions today. That being said, I'll, I'll wrap it up. Virginia, I'm going to here. Um, yeah, <laughs> We're giving you an exclusive, Virginia. You bet. Thank you, uh, right there. That's it. Uh, okay, so if you would join me, we'll move we'll, we'll, What's the next step in this case? Once you file this, what happens? Well, we, the next thing we step in is we will file our petitions uh, at right now. They will be filed in the uh, clerk of the legislature. I believe the, the county attorney, uh, as per our charter, will review our petitions. We feel our petitions are completely and 100% accurate and done efficiently. That being said, um, it will be required by law that the presiding officer calls our uh, calls. I'm sorry, calls to the agenda uh, the referendum for an inspector general here in the county, which can be placed on the ballot for the November election. The next meeting is on July 25th, and that is why we are filing it today, so it meets the seven-day area process here in the county. I think it's good to note, too, that these are signatures not only from Democrats, but Democrat, oh, Republican, everyone. And um, it requires that we have 50 signatures from each LD, but we have much more than that. And I know as someone who has been going out with some petitions, people were so eager to sign this. It's really, really getting the feel from the public that this is what they want, and um, more so than any other, you know, um, petition process I've ever been involved in. So you actually went out there and 
I went with my legislative aid, and I just had we had people respond to us on Facebook that they wanted to sign. You know, they really made the effort to sign, which was really good to see. And again, it's a cross-party line. So to, for this to be ignored would really be a shame. What happens if she submitted it? You said she's been ignored and it's all fine. What happened? Well, she can't ignore this. Um, that not just when it comes to petitioning for what um, is an independent inspector general or commissioner of accounts, um, commissioner investigation, I'm sorry. Any citizen, if they want to see any bill, and people, our council, correct me if I'm wrong, any bill or any particular change that anyone wants to see in this county, this is the process for the citizens to have their opportunity to get a bill before the legislature that doesn't have to be vetted by the legislators per se um, in that process. So. That being said, she can't ignore it. The charter requires for her to call the item uh, and hold the vote, if I'm understanding that correctly. So she cannot ignore these signatures because this is a process that's been put in by giving the people of this county the power and the authority to be able to push for change or legislation in this county. So she can't ignore it. She can ignore us because basically the process for us is we clock in a bill and as a desired officer, there is no, there is no mechanism, or as a county legislature, there is no mechanism that's in place for us to have um, some type of uh, additional voting to require to force her hand to call the bill. So right now, our bills have been languishing in the clerk of the legislature and have not have been called because only one person can either call or not call bills, and that's the desired officer in the office. She has chosen not to call our bills, and that's why there's been no true reform in this county. So on July 20th, she has to acknowledge this? She, yes. And then, so that there would be a referendum? Yes, she, she has to acknowledge this bill. She cannot ignore it. So, subject to review by the county attorney? Yes, subject to review by the county attorney. And I can tell you, this, I, I mean, not to go too much into the, the issue, but I can tell you they're talking to us. They're going to say the, the, the Democrat bill or the Democrat position is going to cost the county money. It's bureaucratic. It's not. What this office would do is there's already been an office created. The county executive created this office. The only thing is he has not given that in person the independence through a contract. He has chosen to hire or be able to fire that individual, and that person reports directly to his uh, deputy county executive. That, to me, is flawed. We need a process independent, very much like the one that's an independent budget review that reports to the legislature, all 19 of us. And we've been advocating and pleading with the Republicans in the majority and the county executive to ensure the process is transparent and fair. And it's just not that when you are, have someone who's supposed to be investigating you also reporting to you. And that's where the flaw is. So basically, they need to give her the independence that she deserves by giving her a contract. If that was done, this entire process is over. But the Republicans have dug in and they've chosen not to do that. And the contracts that passed through the Rules Committee passed through with no scrutiny of independence. They passed through with no level of transparency. And again and again and again, we make ourselves susceptible to, to more ATSEC scandals in this county. As you see now, the U.S. Attorney's Office was investigating VIP Splash, as well as what we saw with Lucha Marketing in regards to that contract as well and how that contract would be cured. And if I may, just one other um, talking point that they might have to be against this is the fact that it would require um, some type of charter change to allow this contract. But that's what this referendum will address in November. So basically what we're doing is going to enable what Kavan was just mentioning, having the security of a contract. You know, will be covered through referendum. I think we've hit all their talking points. Yeah, I think we've hit, I don't think we have any talking points left. This will not cost the taxpayers in Nassau County one nickel, and we are not creating an additional office that takes away the bureaucratic argument. We're willing to work within the confines of the office that Mrs. Myrell yes. has put together. We're even willing to accept Mrs. Myrell because we believe she's qualified to serve in the position of Inspector General or uh, uh, Commissioner of Investigations. We just want to be able to give her a contract which gives them the independence to not report to the, the deputy county executive or the county executive himself. Thank you.